Lara Croft is one of gaming's biggest icons, with her Tomb Raiding career currently spanning over 20 years. She's experienced plenty of ups and downs during this time, though she is currently on the upswing since her series was rebooted in 2013. But this wasn't the first time that Lara Croft needed saving. While the 2013 reboot was significant because it brought fresh life into a series that needed renovation, today we're going to look a little bit closer at the game that first saved Lara Croft, Tomb Raider Legend. Before we can look at the importance of Tomb Raider Legend, we need to go a little bit further back to understand how the series grew and how it reached a place where it needed saving in the first place. Back in the mid-1990s, 3D gaming was still in its infancy, so developers were constantly trying to push boundaries and outdo each other to create the next big thing. Among these developers was a British game company called Core Design, who decided to get in on the early 3D action and develop the character of Lara Croft, a British archaeologist brandishing a pair of dual pistols. The original Tomb Raider was released on the original PlayStation and the Sega Saturn back in 1996, and it was both a critical and commercial hit. The game was praised for its puzzles, exploration, and variety of control, and its innovation to 3D exploration was often being compared to Super Mario 64, which was released around the same time. With a major hit on their hands, Core Design went out to develop more and more Tomb Raider, releasing a new game for the PlayStation every year. As time went on, it was becoming apparent that Tomb Raider was becoming more quantity than quality. Demands on the developers were high as they tried to push out a new Tomb Raider on their tight deadlines. While most of the PS1 era Tomb Raider games were still good in their own right, the time constraints meant they failed to innovate and the series was quickly becoming stale, being more or less the same as the original game. On top of that, the games were being developed on the same game engine meaning that new entries were being published with already outdated graphics from 1996, and controls felt more clunky in comparison to what was first considered acceptable in the original game. While the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider films of the early 2000s kept Lara in the public's eye, interest in the game series was beginning to wane. The series hit an all-time low when Lara made the jump onto the PlayStation 2 with Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness in 2003. Which, if you don't know, it was basically just a broken mess. The future looked uncertain for both Tomb Raider and even its developer core design. Because of declining sales and especially because Angel of Darkness was such a flop, Tomb Raider's publisher, Eidos Entertainment, decided to put another studio named Crystal Dynamics in charge of developing the next Tomb Raider game. With quite a mess on their hands, Crystal Dynamics decided to start with a clean slate and reboot both Lara and her world, taking a look at what once made the series popular and bringing it into the modern age. Their first game, Tomb Raider Legend, came out in 2006 and was once again a critical and commercial success, as many praised it for being a return to form for the franchise. It appeared that the globe-trotting Lara Croft was back. But what exactly did Crystal Dynamics do that made Tomb Raider Legend a success for its time? While the game is admittedly less revolutionary to game design than its original counterpart, it still helped make further leaps in the action-adventure genre, and its impact is still felt today. The first thing Legend completely revamped was its controls. The original Lara was surprisingly clunky and weighty for one appearing to be so acrobatic, and unfortunately, the PS1 games haven't aged well. But in Legend, Lara moves with ease, jumping around ledges, flipping over poles, and using her grappling hook to swing across chasms like one would expect her to. Not only was Legend leaps and bounds further ahead from its predecessors in this department, it was also fairly ahead of other games at this time as well, as most video game protagonists were still often pretty stiff in their movements. Having such a moveset with the ability to jump and climb so freely in a world was rarely seen at this time, except in a few other cases such as Prince of Persia, which unfortunately that series has kind of been a bit lost to time. Even Tomb Raider's closest competitor, Naughty Dog's Uncharted series, featured a far more stiff and awkwardly controlled Nathan Drake in the original Uncharted Drake's Fortune, even though that game came out an entire year after Legend hit shelves. Not only was Lara's moveset refined and quickened, but so was the entire game experience. The story always pushes you to the next discovery, the next landmark to visit, the next ledge to grasp, the next puzzle to solve. You are always moving. The puzzles are witty environment-based ones that always have you continuing to climb, grapple, and push things in order to move ahead. 
The combat is flashy and fun, giving you that intentional over-the-top action hero feel. Another important aspect of the original Tomb Raider was how the game used story to push along its gameplay. The original featured animated cutscenes, its gameplay felt movie-like for the time, and the story helped bring Lara all around the world to seek archaeological treasures in quite a variety of levels. Tomb Raider Legend returns to that form, and while it builds the most emotionally complex Lara of the time and contains a straightforward narrative, it does so to push the gameplay forward, not the other way around. The levels in this game get more creative and fun as time goes on, and Lara visits a staggering seven different countries throughout her journey to keep everything, from color palettes to gameplay styles, feeling fresh and varied. Whenever I thought the game might soon become stale or repetitive, it mixed things up again and made it fun to discover. The story, while admittedly feeling a little bit cheesy to me in the beginning, also picked up pace after the first couple of levels and became quite engaging. I particularly appreciated that while Lara was being re-established in her role as a fun, fearless, and butt-kicking globetrotter, Crystal Dynamics also chose to give her more sympathy, curiosity, and wonder than players had seen in her before, something that was magnified even further in the second reboot. The mid-2000s were also when game developers began experimenting more with cinematic storytelling and were trying to push the boundaries of how much a game could feel like a movie. While modern Tomb Raider is known for its highly cinematic quality, Legend took many of these first steps. It featured voice acting throughout the game, including when you were in control of Lara. It had little interactive cinematic moments, such as having birds fly away when you approach them or having a ledge crumble as you climb across, something the Uncharted series particularly fell in love with. And it contained more gameplay variety in its puzzles, exploration, combat, and movement that really made you feel like you were part of an action movie. It was like you were Angelina Jolie in the new Tomb Raider film. The game also featured quick time events in its cutscenes, a move that was amazing for its time and is still used today, though personally I feel like it's outgrown its welcome. But the importance is that while all these changes certainly helped update the series and gave Tomb Raider a much needed facelift and definitely continued to help push it in the direction where the series is today, the reason Tomb Raider Legend saved Lara Croft was because it brought back the fun. It was fast-paced and compelling. It didn't take itself too seriously. It streamlined many of the aspects of the series and made everything it tried to do feel polished. While trying to meet grueling demands of the market, core design lost what made its original series so special, and it tried to make Tomb Raider into something that it wasn't. Tomb Raider was about campy fun and exploration and discovering what to do next while also trying to push the boundaries of character control and level-based cinematic storytelling in a very competent experience. Crystal Dynamics got back to the heart of the series and took it the next step. Tomb Raider Legend feels like that natural next step in its genre's evolution. You can see how the 2013 reboot took these cinematic platforming and storytelling elements and continue to push them further to help drive the series where it is today. Sometimes a game's importance isn't in revolutionizing a series, but helping it refine its core and heart. Tomb Raider Legend brought the series back to where it should be, so that it could once grow and revolutionize again. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more game analysis videos, please feel free to hit subscribe. It's been really cool watching a little community forum on this channel, and I'm so grateful for all of you that comment and interact, and I would love to see this family grow. This has been the Girl with the Controller, and hope you have a lovely day.